ladies and gentlemen, the Mills Brothers. Welcome to this night's broadcast. Hi, my name is John Miller, representing WCNC Charlotte at 7 News. I'm lucky to be given the opportunity to give an interview to Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler has been recently promoted to the leader of Germany. He is known to be one of the greatest speakers of all time. Hitler is said to do anything, and I mean anything, to get what he wants. The purpose of this interview is to inform the people of America what is going on in Germany and their new leader, Adolf Hitler. Hello, Mr. Adolf Hitler. It is a pleasure to finally meet you. Thank you. Now, why have you come today? I have come to learn about your life, your plan for the German government, and to inform my fellow Americans of the situation in Germany. What do you mean by situation? Oh, nothing, sir. I mean no harm. I'm just here to learn. I understand. I hope you do not mind me asking about your childhood. No, I do not mind. Thank you, Mr. Hiller. What can you tell me about your father? My father was a great man. He was a determined man, like myself, and he was always good to me. Had he been married before? Yes. He was first married to Anna Glassy, who he divorced within two months. He then married Franziska Matzelsberger. Together they had two children, Alwa Jr. and Angela. After that, he married Clara Poltz, my dear mother. Even though my father was double the age of my mother, they loved each other very dearly. Is it true that your father and mother are second cousins? Yes. <laughs> that is true. Who is Paula? Paula was my sister. Did you have any other siblings? Yes, I did, but they all passed away very young. I'm very sorry. How did that affect your childhood? Well, my younger brother Edmund was my best friend. I loved him. We did everything together, and when he died, nothing was ever the same. You two must have had a great relationship. Can you tell me why your last name isn't the same as your grandmother's, Schickleberger? We did not like the name, and we just <laughs> decided to <laughs> modify my step-grandfather's name, Hitler, to something easier. That's why my last name is now Hitler. How was your experience in school when you were young? Ha ha ha. When I was in elementary school, I did not really see a point to it. I thought that school was meaningless and stupid. How was your high school life? In high school, I did not get good grades. I came home every day and did what I loved most. I drew. I had a great love for art as a teen, and I still do. I never did my homework, and my mom did anything I asked. What year did you graduate high school? That's funny, because I didn't. I dropped out at the age of 16, and after I dropped out, I drew every single day. My mom provided food for me. Everything was great until my mother died of breast cancer. Did your father take care of you after that? Actually, no. My father died of a lung hemorrhage a few years before that. How did the losses of your parents affect you? The loss of my father was not that tragic. I watched him die at the dinner table and showed no emotion. When my mother died, though, it was the worst day of my life. Once my mother died, I did not know what to do with my life, so I moved to Vienna to pursue my art career. What happened once you moved to Vienna? <sighs> I tried to become successful in art, but I was denied by the art school. I became homeless and I learned many of my anti-Semitic ideas from the streets of Vienna. About five years later, I was called for the draft in Austria, so I decided to move to Munich, Germany. You dodged the draft? Isn't that illegal? <laughs> Do you think I care? Of course it is. I then volunteered for the German army and became a dispatch runner. Dispatch runner? Isn't that dangerous? Yes. It is one of the most dangerous jobs in the army. I was shot in the leg and hit with mustard gas, but I didn't care. I was willing to do anything for my country. How do you receive any acknowledgement for that? Yes, I received two iron crosses. They are my most prized possessions. How do you feel when the war ended? I was infuriated, to be honest. Germany was supposed to be the strongest country in the world, but we surrendered like we were cowards. If I was leader then, I would not have allowed for such weaknesses within my country, regardless of our economic standpoint. After the war, did you get a job? Yes. I became an informant for the new government. My job was to keep an eye on the German Workers' Party. I later became the seventh leader. When did you become the leader of the Nazi Party? I became the leader of the Nazi Party on July 29th, 1922. How many members did you have? Well, then we had 56,000 members by January of 1923. Wow. Well, what can you tell me about the essay? I made the essay. I gave them two jobs. Create chaos and get rid of other parties. Where was the beer hall putsch? The beer hall putsch is when the SA and I burst into a meeting of government leaders in Munich. 
I have been told that you gave a speech to the government leaders. What can you tell me about that? I told them about what my plans for the country were, and some of them agreed with me. Feeling confident, I then led a victory parade through the streets, but we were met by the police. The police opened fire on my men and I. Many of them died around me, but I survived. How did you remain unharmed in open fire when so many of your men died around you? I have lived through my childhood where all but one of my siblings died. I have survived a bullet and a mustard gas attack, and I have survived open fire. The reason that I survived is because I am the chosen one. Chosen one for what? My purpose is to take over and save Germany. Were you punished for this? I was charged with treason. Isn't the punishment for treason death? <laughs> Let's just say that I make a good lawyer. What do you mean? In the trial, I pleaded guilty, but I persuaded the judges that Germany needed me, and they only sentenced me to five years. That's incredible. What was life in prison like? It was not bad at all. The warden was a follower of mine, and he gave me his office as my room. It was very nice. It had a nice bed and a window, and it was fairly large. I also requested a s for someone to write my new book. What book? It is called Mein Kampf. I told my editor what to write down, and he did. My book was about all my life and my plan for Germany's future. When did you get out of prison? About eight months. How did you get away with that, sir? I just simply used my persuasion skills and natural, you know, coolness. Did you start the Nazi party back when after you were released? Yes. The first meeting was in February of 1925. 4,000 members attended. Who is Joseph Goebbels? He is my best friend and my minister of propaganda. Who is Gelly? Gelly was the love of my life and the daughter of my half-sister, Angela. She must have been unhappy with her life, and she committed suicide. Do you think it could have been something with you? No! Don't ever say that. I'm sorry, sir. You should be. May I ask how the Great Depression affected your leadership? Well, when the times in Germany were bad, people came to be for charge. I led my... came to be... came to me for change, and I led my country when they needed it the most. Is it true that you were not even a citizen at this point? Yes, I became a German citizen in February of 1932. Why did you decide to become a citizen? I was running for president and you had to be a citizen to run. How did the election go? I lost the election to Paul von Hindenburg, but the Nazi party did win 230 seats in the Reichstag. Who was Eva Braun? She was my girlfriend. She tried committing suicide like Gelly, but it was for attention. That's unfortunate. What was your plan for the Nazis to take over the whole Reichstag? It kind of just worked out for me because the communists burned down the Reichstag building and they were kicked out. They burned it down? Yeah, why do you ask? I was just wondering, when were you appointed the Chancellor? I was appointed by President Hindenburg in 1933. What can you tell me about the Enabling Act? I created it to give me the power at President while I was Chancellor because Hindenburg was getting too old to run the country properly. Some claim that you are responsible for the death of President Hindenburg. Is that true? Uh, I think you better go now. All right, sir. Thank you for your time.